Hello, Cindy here. Happy day. Hope everyone's doing amazing today. And I'm talking all about love, of course. The three reasons why love is hard and how to turn it around. If you guys remember, I spoke about the other day um, why you're not attracting lasting love in your life. Um, so this is a continuation of that and supporting you upon breaking free from those thoughts and beliefs that are standing in the way of really attracting a partnership that lasts. So who wants to attract lasting love? If you want to attract lasting love, just put love in the comment box. I want to hear from you if you guys are ready and you're really ready to dive in and do what it takes to remove the barriers that are standing in the way. So I'm, I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of what I talked about before. And what we were talking about is, you know, couple things, bringing your past into your present. So, you know, projecting onto a new guy um, about your ex, and not necessarily that you're talking about your ex to them, but you're, you're projecting that person or having expectations that they're going to treat you that way. So there's this feeling of, putting this other person in a box. So the new guy shouldn't have to pay for what happened to you in the past. So clearing your past and actually deciding that you really like men because there's usually something underlying that says, you know, I can't trust men. Men have never been there for me. And I haven't been able to really have what I want. Maybe love isn't for me. All of that. And there's, there's just this negative tape that keeps playing. And the second one is underneath it, you just don't like men. And so if you don't like men and you're always looking for an angle that they're wrong, you're going to prove yourself right. So whatever you focus on becomes reality. Whatever you focus on becomes reality. Also, creating a story around what isn't happening. So maybe you go out with a man once and you start communicating and, he, and you guys decide you're going to go out again and then you don't hear from him. You start to create a story that's negative around what's really going on or that it's negative about you. He doesn't really like you. Maybe you said too much about something. And what it does is, you know, all of that fear actually pushes love away. And there's a, a neediness and a desperate energy with wanting approval. So a big one is a lot of times when women and men do this too so i want you guys to hear this when you're out there dating you might be looking for this approval like i need to hear that i'm beautiful i need to hear that he thinks i'm the best thing ever and he doesn't even know you <laughs> so with love right so the biggest thing is is if you need this approval this constant approval from a guy they feel that and it's draining it that is needy so a lot of women think neediness is um you know if you call him too much or you're you know you always want to spend time with him or something like that it's not about that neediness is actually the need for validation the need for validation you need to hear things that you actually already know and, you know, if a pattern changes or something happens, there's this upset within you. You know, he starts off by telling you how amazing you are, how beautiful you are. And then, you know, he's not doing that as often. And there's just this constant need for validation. It's exhausting. 
Think about a man that needs to hear validation all the time, that needs to hear that he's so great or, you know, he's, you know, the best thing ever and he's fishing for compliments. It literally turns you off because most people are attracted to confident people. And you might be confident, however, there's a difference between confidence and, and, and a self-esteem thing going on on the inside. So you can be confident on, confident on the outside, but then there's a self-esteem problem. So, and that self-esteem goes from the need to be validated. So that's a big one. You're looking for approval constantly. And that may be subconscious, but it's true. So the other thing, the other really big one is you're easily offended. So you're easily offended by what a man says, what he doesn't say, what, you know, if he says, hey, sexy, when he, you know, first connects with you online and you get offended and you just say, see you later, right? And you're not easily offended by a man that you perceive to be really hunky and gorgeous. You know, he calls you, hey, beautiful, and you're like, whoa, <laughs> right? So it's selective. And if you get easily offended and then you create a story around, you know, all men are pigs, all men want is sex. Do men want sex? Yes, you want sex too, probably, right? But it's, it's not the driving force of a man's connection to you unless they're looking for something casual. And there's a sm much smaller percentage of that. Unless a guy's in his 20s and that's just kind of who he is and where he's at and what he's looking for and God bless him, right? And there are men in their 40s that do the same. You know, it's across the board. But what I'm trying to tell you, if you get easily offended and you lash out easily or you remove somebody as an option, before, you know, setting a healthy boundary, before even exploring it and going into judgment mode. So this is a big one. It's either, you know, your pendulum slides on one side or the other. Oh, he said this, he's out, I'm offended, you know, um, and labeling men are only looking for X. Those things are going to make love really hard for you. And the ability to not allow yourself to be curious and communicate. If you create stories about someone based on one thing they said, you're absolutely going to shelter yourself or continue to make love really hard. So what you want to do, and you know, men can do this just the same as women can. So they can create these types of scenarios. They can go into, you know, there's men out there that don't like women. You might, he might think that he wants something, you know, wants a relationship, and then you do one thing that triggers him, and then all of a sudden he goes into a bad experience that he has, and you start paying for his past. So those are things, you know, these are things, to, the constant need for approval. So that constant need for approval means there's a hole in your soul that gets to be filled up with some self-love. So you get to pour in self-love. You get to pour in um, doing things for yourself that make you feel amazing. And then the rest from a partner and a man is just icing on the cake. You know, you're already a really great cake right? He doesn't need to be the cake and the icing. He gets to be the icing or the cherry on top. 
you're fully amazing the way you are. And the need for a man or validation or even settling for less. You know, I think I work with, sorry, I got hair in my mouth, you guys, sorry. Um, you know, I work with women that will sometimes, you know, settle for less or settle for someone that, it, you know, close but no cigar. And we've all done this, right? Um, so looking at it from an empowered place of how do you turn this around? Well, you, you get really clear on what it is you want and the kind of partnership you want. So that's the other reason why love can be hard is because you're walking around blind and you don't really know what you're doing or and you're a doormat you're accepting less than what you're worthy of so there's some so, so there's some you know big dividing points when it comes to that you're accepting less than what you're worthy of you're letting a guy string you along you're you know you're not becoming clear around your boundaries and what it is you're looking for there's a real attachment to the outcome. When you have a real attachment to the outcome, especially before you really know somebody, you know, it's okay to have attachments. It's okay to have expectations because we teach people how to treat us. But if you have an attachment to the outcome and, you know, you start fantasizing about how it's going to be, how it should be, and you start investing in someone before you really know them, then you're setting yourself up to make love hard and continuing to have the mindset of I'm not enough, maybe I'm not really worthy of love. And those tapes keep playing, that's what's going to manifest itself. And your attitude. So if you have a great attitude and you look at this as a fun, exploratory type of thing, right? You know, you look at this as, yes, I'm going to meet the love of my life and I'm going to have a lot of fun along the way. And I'm going to set up an, a, ro a rotation. I'm going to get to know multiple people. And I'm going to create connections with people and be open to where that takes me. That turns your love life around. And not worrying about the timeline and trusting that it will work out because faith without works is dead. So if you're putting <clears throat> if you're putting in selective effort and this is the number one priority for you or you're allowing yourself to get frustrated and triggered all the time, then there gets to be work done. You know, if you're triggered all the time it's a big sign that there's deeper work, there's more emotional work that gets to be done with you. And I highly recommend getting, hiring a coach, working with a therapist, doing a combination of both to really support you around the trajectory of this. So once you're so darn crystal clear on what it is you want to bring in, the kind of partnership, how you want to feel, um, creating deep connections, right? How to do that. Curiosity creates connection. Curiosity creates connection. And having fun in the process. You know, like everybody that you meet, you look for the you know, the gold, the blessing of who they are, because I believe everyone really has some great, amazing qualities about them. So allowing yourself to see that within them will help you to be open. So let go of the grievances of your past. Let go of resentments. Let go of all of that and decide that I'm going to open up my heart. I'm going to actually do the deeper work 
that it takes to create what I want. And if you feel like you're, you know, I'm in a mess in my love life right now, then, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, you guys, then do the work that it takes. Work with somebody on a deeper level. Ask questions. Get curious. Look at your patterns because we all have patterns. And work on that mindset piece. Mindset is the number one thing that will take you out of the game and the feeling of lack. Like, I'm not going to really get what I want. The more you focus on that, the more it won't happen. So... I hope this helps you guys today, and I would love to hear from you. If you're ready for love, you're ready for that deep, connected love, just put love in the comment box. If you've had this feeling that love is hard, and you're ready to take these steps, or you're stubborn, and you've just been holding on to old ideas, I encourage you to you know, send me a direct message and just say, I'm stuck. And let me, I, I work with women, I, I've coached them through direct messaging tons of times or hopping on a call with, with you. There's a breakthrough, a huge one. Um, typically the first time we talk. So I hope this helps you guys today. I hope it really helps lighten you up, open you up to possibility. Because love is seriously all around you. Um, men crave love just as much as, as women do. So um, if you know a woman that needs to hear this, please go ahead and share it. If you're on YouTube and you like it, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, if you are on IGTV, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, everyone.